Hello my friends, welcome to the tier list for Legacy of the Meme. In order to do this tier list, I am going to use three different requirements for rating units. One, is the meme good? Two, is the unit fun to use? And three, uh, did I like it? It's really subjective. This isn't based on power level or anything like that, though if a unit is just super underpowered and it doesn't feel good to use, then that's going to be part of it. And if it's too powerful, then you don't want to use it all the time, so it's kind of just whatever I want. There's 30 units in this, so let's get into it. First is the Whirlwind Spinlot, the helicopter, the inspiration for Legacy of the Meme. I think the idea is really funny, and the spin is just remarkably useful. Air units tend to stack, and there's a lot of them in Legacy of the Void. These guys can use the spin up to charge in, they can use it to take down air, there's a whole lot of variety to it, all for a mineral only dump, and they do a small amount of area damage on their attacks. These guys are great, A tier. The Centurion had three abilities, it stuns itself and an area, which is actually pretty powerful. It means the ones in front that are taking a lot of the damage will stun themselves while others are continuing to charge in, and they won't be targeted down while disabling enemies. A very nice ability, though it doesn't work on a lot of later game enemies because it doesn't hit massive or hybrid. The ability to cloak while not moving is basically useless because it breaks if there's enemies in melee range so you can't make a wall, and it's an AI so it's not like you're ambushing it. And then when you get over 100 supply of them, they double all of their stats and become insanely fun and probably overpowered. Though I will say that 50 Centurions being 100 supply and that being the trigger is a bit of a flavor fail, and I'm gonna have to dock some points from that. If it was designed in a way that it was actually 100 Centurions, I think it would get a little notch up. I'm gonna give the Centurion a very solid high B tier. The third Zealot is the Sentinel. Instead of being revived when it dies, it splits off into two baby zealots, which is objectively worse than the infinite, re infinite resurrection ability that the normal sentinel has, but it does these babies, they do the same amount of damage. They might have half the durability, but man, they punch stuff good. And their pitched up voices are freaking hilarious. It never gets old. You're just like doing your own thing, playing the game, and then you just randomly hear this little guy like, we face the enemies in battle. <laughs> it's just so stupid and I love it. I'm gonna give it as well a solid B tier. All three of the zealots really killing it here. Next up is the ranged warriors. We're gonna go with the adept. The fact that it starts as a ghost and has the ability to shade out a regular adept is both funny and really cool. It means that the mass adept early is basically unbeatable, but as your army gets more and more complicated, it's super difficult to use them inside of a full army. I could actually see this being a regular RTS unit in addition to being just a fun stupid meme. B tier. The Dragoon had bad pathing, but it was actually pretty decent bad pathing in that you're, they went in dumb places and you'd always just look at them and be like, why are you over there? But they didn't feel that horrible to use. It was a quite good balance. The increased damage and range that they got in order to make up for that is actually pretty nice. So combat wise, they can actually do more than their base campaign variant once they get into the action. But honestly, they're kind of vanilla for Legacy of the Memes, so I'm going to give them a C tier. Next up is the Stalker, S-T-A-L-K-E-R. The fact that it's irradiated is a really fun reference to an incredible game. Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is absolutely amazing. The way that it spawns cows when it blinks is both dumb fun and teaches how irradiate works, which I think is also great. My main problem with the Stalker is that it makes biological units basically inviable, and that limits a lot of dumb compositions, which I think is really sad. As a result of that last part, I'm gonna have to give it C tier. All in all, I think that the ranged warriors were probably the weakest tier in Legacy of the Meme, but honestly, none of them were bad. That's a pretty, pretty good bar to set. Next up is the Dark Templar variant, the Shadow Furry. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I should hate this, but I never would have ever thought of it, so I sort of love it. It was so out of left field for me that I can't believe that it happened. The Shadow Furies are super strong early on, but melee units do fall off fast in the later stages of Legacy of the Void. And single DTs being buff is pretty cool, but there's so many Banelings in later Legacy of the Void that they don't really do that well. I'm gonna say that just for the creativity, it deserves an A tier, but probably a low A tier. After that is the Avenger. The custom names on the Avengers are so fantastic, and the fact that I was able to look at those and then into it what the ability would be is really cool. That is good design. The fact that Avengers Assemble recalls all of the Avengers to each other, oh, it's just so smart. It works out so well. The unit was a bit underpowered when I was using it, but now it has the death recall ability and it's called plot armor. 
I think that's really going to bump it up to the next level. But I'm not like the biggest Marvel fan or anything, so I'm going to have to give it a B tier. Next up is the Blood Hunter. It's got the shark theme. It can detect biological units. It can pull flyers out of the air onto the ground, which isn't really what a shark does. And it can leap off cliffs just like a shark. Actually, I'm not sure it's a shark theme now that I talk about it. All in all, the unit has some really strong, interesting abilities, and I actually think it's very viable as part of an army, which a lot of the Dark Templar aren't. But it's not, like, super meme-worthy, so I'm gonna give it C tier. The Sentry tier is next, and the base Sentry is so funny. I love it so much. Whenever it spawns, a rock falls on its head because of the, uh, voice line in Maw of the Void that resources were deposited because of centuries of asteroid impacts, and that's just great. The fact that whenever they spawn the stupid, the disco lots <laughs> coming out, and the music changes, the guardian shell changes color as well. Oh, it's so good. And then on top of that, the shield regeneration ability is just solid. The sentry is good, dumb fun, and it gets a nice A tier for that. Next up is the Energizer, who actually got some of the least suggestions of all of the units in the run. There's just not a whole lot of design space for it, and I think that they did their best. The bunny is cute, but it's not, like, super fun. C tier. And the final sentry variant is the Havoc. Uh, it, <laughs> it made me really scared when it used target lock on and made the enemies really inflated and big, but they actually do take extra damage from that. And the AoE force field ability is garbage, but it's also hilarious. <laughs> so I'm going to give the Havoc, probably power-wise it deserves a C tier, and then flavor-wise it's better than that, so I'm going to give it a B tier. <laughs> Up after that is Phoenix in a Phoenix. I really like this one. It's got Starcraft 1 voice lines from Phoenix. The suplex is just hilarious and feels very Phoenix. <laughs> like, why would you lift the guy up when you could throw him in the air and kill him? That's very Phoenix. <laughs> It did used to have a problem when I started using it where it would target the same enemy with a bunch of them and put them all on cooldown, but that is now fixed for your guys' release, which means that it's going to be a lot better. I'm going to toss this straight into A tier. After that is the Corsair, which is a dedicated anti-air unit. It kind of feels jumbled with random strut thrown together. The cloud ability from Warcraft 3 is a bit weird. It makes sense because it's basically the same thing, but it's like, all right. And then the anti-muta ability to make up for the mass recall being bugged is funny, but it's also pretty niche. Looting enemies when they kill them is a neat idea as well, but all in all, the theming feels all over the place. The abilities don't whiff, and the unit is pretty dang good, but it, it doesn't feel very cohesive. I'm gonna give it a low B tier. And then comes the Mirage. Lifting the objectives is so stupid. It's so stupid. I love it so much. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I don't care. It's insanely strong as well. And then when it's hit on top of that, it makes hallucinations. Oh, it's just icing on the cake, S tier. I love the Mirage. There's so many objectives that I want to lift. Can you even lift a Void Thrasher? I don't know, we should figure that out. Now on to the Immortals. The Crab Immortal, the first time that we used the Crab Immortal, it was not a finished unit. It was still ranged and it felt very weird. But between when we used it first and the end of the campaign, it was buffed to be a melee unit with better stats, and it has a lightsaber, and it can kill hybrid, A tier. The Annihilator is after that, and uh, it shoots cows, which is, I mean, we already had the cow meme, I'll be honest, and then it can siege up into siege mode and shoot cows at a long range, but it's bad. It just, it didn't feel very good to use. And as a result, I'm going to toss it into C tier. The Vanguard, on the other hand, is intuitive and hilarious. I just, I love the little dude standing on the van. I still don't understand why it shoots Banelings, but at this point, I just don't care. The ability to load units into it is basically useless, but I do want to load a Vanguard full of stuff and then load all of those Vanguards into a carrier and then do a mega super death drop. That sounds pretty fun. The first time that we used it, it was a little bit too dummy thick and it just could not path through anything, but it got slimmed down a little bit and it feels a lot better to use now. A tier. Onto the spellcasters is the High Templar. The Moving Storm is a pretty cool idea. The first time that we used it, it was bugged and it was doing half damage, but now it's apparently a lot better, so that's going to be pretty fun. Feedback giving actual feedback based on how well you do is great. The Archon morphing into having progressively more O's as it absorbs more Templar is hilarious, and Dawadiru as a cap is a very nice reference. The problem is that it does mean that the Archon is basically never worth using. Dawadiru is worth like 15 supply and is an absolute treat. I just, I wish there was a reason to use the Super Archon that you made. It's still a lot of fun though, so I'm gonna toss it into A tier. Next up is Darth Archon. 
it's it's a really fun design the lightning attack seems really bad on brutal but i'm pretty sure it's insanely overpowered on hard and below just because the enemies don't have those armor upgrades the auto cast on force push is really cool and confusion is very strong lots of fun great theming it's a blast to use a tier the final spellcaster is the ascendant and it was pretty broken during my playthrough so i'm just not gonna rate it but i do like the ideas behind it all right we're on to the siege walkers let's go for the long zealot um the, the long zealot is strictly worse than the normal colossus the beams going out instead of in means that against large groups it's pretty okay but struggles against the large majority of fights because its beams just miss doing melee stuff against melee enemies is pretty cool but it doesn't come up that much and for some it just it just makes me feel weird when i look at it and i don't know why uh i can't explain it i'm gonna give it a low b tier maybe high no nah, low b tier after that is the wraith walker which is it's insanely strong the wraiths every time that they shoot out going whoa is pretty fun and it's actually not super annoying which i'm impressed with and then i don't understand why it does extra damage when it walks on people but you know what that ability is really good so i'll take it b tier and then the final siege unit is the butterfleaver what an incredible concept it's a huge investment, it's really hard to use, but you get rewarded with an amazing death machine. It's thematic, creative, fun to use, with a balanced difficulty and reward, S tier. We got two more categories left, let's go into the Void Ray tier. The first Void Ray, whenever it gets hit, it teleports around, which is kinda funny, it's the Avoid Ray, but it's also pretty annoying, and if it teleports your guy into an army, then it just dies. When the beam fires, it gets thicker and thicker, which it's just kind of boring, I'll be honest. I'm going to put the Void Ray as, I think this is the first D tier. I just, it didn't really get me going. Now, a unit that did get me going is the Destroyer. The fact that the chain beam does almost no damage to the main target and then fires off these laser forks of death over everyone else is so dumb and i think there's going to be a lot of interesting and cool strategies you can come up with the fact that it's the death sheep and then it says the jet death sheep descends as well i think is pretty fun once i figured out what was going on there i kept thinking it was a ram and i was trying to come up with ram puns which was definitely my problem all in all i think the destroyer is a blast and has a lot of creativity to it so i'm gonna give it a tier and then the final one on this tier is the orbiter which it doesn't orbit things properly i'm sorry i i understand that it's very difficult to get that going however i'm gonna have to dock points because it just rotates everything else about it is fantastic though i don't know why it shoots zealots and i don't care the cloak movement normalization feels fantastic and then recall which is actually spelled like i don't know how to pronounce it it's recall spelled backwards and it fires people off from the arbiter's position to somewhere else it's insane and it has so many crazy things you could do with it arbiter feels awesome to use a tier and then we're going to jump into the final tier the capital ships first up is the carrier the ganthrothor ability that it explodes on a thing and destroys everything is overpowered and hilarious repair drones being replaced with gary is fun but i don't get the joke if there is one i don't know if there's like a pun or something going on that i just don't get and being able to transport units is actually just really it's it feels great like i i never really thought about it before but it's just really nice to have i love it the carrier is going to get a tier and the only reason it's not s tier is because it's on the same tier as the mothership and that's a tough one to compete with I can't do that the penultimate unit is the tempest and it's a tough one to work with it shoots out archons as its projectile but the archons aren't like actually archons are just projectiles i think that you should have gone the extra mile and just made it fire archons like a weird brood lord i'm not even sure i mean it'd probably be pretty good you'd have to give it a long attack cooldown or something but eh, who cares it's the tempest the fact that you can stack multiple disintegrates on the same target is cool but i legitimately don't get the joke and then the whirlwind ability is it's fine uh tempest is gonna be c tier it's a little bit boring but that might just be because of the two that it has to contend against because the final unit is the mothership it's a beyblade i don't even care about the other abilities this the beyblade is the single most fun ability to use in starcraft 2 everything about it feels so 
good. It is so much fun. S tier mothership is MVP. It is my favorite unit in this game. It's so awesome. It's got like a laser, whatever. It spawns those baby ships. I don't even remember what they do. They have a bunch of autocast abilities. No one cares. It's a Beyblade. Let it rip.